ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय We're getting to hear from Shrimad Bhagavatam, fourth, sixth canto, chapter four, text number thirty-two. Asita nasti chavastu nistayor, ekastayor bina viruda dharma no. Avekshitam kinchana yoga sankhya yo Samam param yanu kulam brahattat Astiti nasti ticha vastu nishtayor Ekastayor bina viruda dharma no Avekshitam kinchana yoga sankhya yo Samam param yana kulam brihattat Please Astiti nasti chita vasta nishtayo Asti, there is, iti, thus, na, not, asti, there is, 
iti, thus, cha, and, vas tu nishteyo, professing knowledge of the ultimate cause. Ekasteyo, with one and the same subject matter. Establishing Brahman. Bina, demonstrating different. Viruta Dharmano, and opposing characteristics. Avekshitam, perceived. Kinchana, that's something which. Yoga Sankhyayo, of mystic yoga and the Sankhya philosophy. Analysis of the ways of nature. Samam, the same. Param, transcendental. He, indeed. Anakulam, dwelling place. Brihatat, that ultimate, that ultimate cause. Translation. There are two parties, namely the theist and the atheist. The theist who accepts the super soul finds the spiritual cause through mystic yoga. The Sankhyaite, however, who merely analyzes the material elements, comes to a conclusion of impersonalism and does not accept the supreme cause whether Bhagavan, Paramatma, or even Brahman. Instead, he's preoccupied with the superfluous, external activities of material nature. Ultimately, however, both parties demonstrate the absolute truth because although they offer op opposing statements, their object is the same ultimate cause. They are both approaching the same Supreme Brahman, to whom I offer my respectful obeisances. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Actually, there are two sides to this argument. Some say that the Absolute has no form, nirakara. Others say that the Absolute has a form, sakara. Therefore, the word form is the common factor. Although some accept it, asti or astika, whereas others try to negate it, nasti or nastika. Since the devotees consider the word form, akara, the common factor for both, he offers his respectful basises to the form, although others may go on arguing about whether the absolute has a form or not. In this verse, the word yoga, sankhya, is very important. Yoga means Bhakti yoga. Yoga means bhakti yoga. Because yogis also accept the existence of the all pervading supreme soul and try to see that supreme soul within their hearts. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 12, 13, 1, Janava Vistita Tadgatena Manasa Pashanti Yam Yoginaha. The devotee tries to come directly in touch with the supreme personality of Godhead. Whereas the yogi tries to find the super soul within the heart by meditation. Thus both directly and indirectly, yoga means bhakti yoga. Sankhya, however, means physical study of the cosmic situation through speculative knowledge. This is generally known as jnana shastra. The sankhyites are attached to the impersonal Brahman, but the absolute truth is known in three ways. Brahmeti, Paramaiti, Bhagavaniti, Shabdite. The absolute truth is one. But some accept him as impersonal Brahman, some as the super soul existing everywhere, and some as Bhagavan, the supreme personality of Godhead. The central point is the absolute truth. Although the impersonalists and personalists fight with one another, they focus upon the same para Brahman the same absolute truth. In the Yoga Shastras, Krishna is described as follows. Krishnam pasangam baram ambujekshanam shatur bhujam shanka gadad yudhar yudam 
Thus, the pleasing appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead's bodily features, his limbs and his dress, are described. The Sankhya Shastra, however, denies the existence of the Lord's transcendental form. The Sankhya Shastra says that the Supreme Absolute Truth has no hands, no legs, and no name. Yanama rupa gunapani padam achakshur ashrotram ekam advitiyam apinama rupadikam nasti. The Vedic mantras say, apani pado javano grihita. Supreme Lord has no legs and hands, but he can accept whatever is offered to him. Actually, such statements accept that the Supreme has hands and legs, but deny that he has material hands and legs. That is why the Absolute is called a Prakrita. Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God, it has a Satchitananda Vigraha, a form of eternity, knowledge, and bliss, not a material form. The Sankhites or Gyanis deny the material form. And the devotees also know very well that the absolute truth, Bhagavan, has no material form. Ishvaraha Parama Krishna Satchitananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Savakarna Karnam. Krishna, who is known as Govinda, is the supreme controller. He has an eternal, blissful, spiritual body. He's the origin of all. He has no other origin, for he is the prime cause of all causes. The conception of the absolute without hands and legs and the conception of the absolute with hands and legs are apparently contradictory, but they both coincide with the same truth about the supreme absolute person. Therefore, the word vastu nishtayo, which is used herein, indicates that both the yogis and sankhyites have faith in the reality but are arguing about it from different viewpoints of material and spiritual identities. Parabrahman, or Brihat, is the common point. The Sankhites and yogis are both situated in that same Brahman, but they differ because of different angles of vision. The directions given by the Bhakti Shastra point one in the perfect direction, because the Supreme Personality of Godhead says in Bhagavad Gita, Bhaktiamam Abhijanati. Only by devotional service am I to be known. The Bhaktas know that the Supreme Person has no material form, whereas the Gyanis simply deny the material form. One should therefore take shelter of the Bhakti Marg, the path of devotion. Then everything will be clear. Gyanis concentrate on the Vrata Rupa, the gigantic universal form of the Lord. This is a good system in the beginning for those who are extremely materialistic, but there's no need to think continuously of the Virata Rupa. When Arjuna was shown the Virata Rupa of Krishna, he saw it, but he did not want to see it perpetually. He therefore requested the Lord to return to his original form as two-armed Krishna. In conclusion, learned scholars find no contradictions in the devotee's concentration upon the spiritual form of the Lord. Ishvaraha, Parama Krishna, Satchitananda Vigraha. In this regard, Srila Madhvacharya says that less intelligent non-devotees think that their conclusion is the ultimate, but because devotees are completely learned, they can understand that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the ultimate goal. Srila Prabhupada Ki! Omikyana Timurandasya Ginanjana Salakya Chakshun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurvena Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadapi Swapadandikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Namane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharane Nivishesha Shunyavadi Pashatya Deshatarane 
Vancha kapatri bhyascha kripa sindhu bhivacha patitanam pavane bhyo vaishna bhyo namo namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sarigor Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Some of you know me. My name is Rajendra Nanana Das. And uh, there's a song that says, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. I am so glad to be in your company. Uh, it's local time again. There's hundreds of devotees, not thousands of devotees. And we're about to get even less in number. This morning, uh, Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj, His Holiness, uh, Bhaktivedanta Dhamadar Swami, the devote, his soldiers, their soldiers, they're going out, they're leaving to go on a safari. Gopa Swami Prabhu, he's leaving tomorrow. Janani Vas Prabhu, he's leaving. I have one friend. I don't see him here. I know him as a Brahmachari Baksuki Bhakta in San Diego. He's leaving today. The devotees are leaving in mass. That's a vice now for you. They break your heart every time. But it's our duty and it's my pleasure to have the microphone and ask if all of you would please chant one Maha Mantra so that they can have empowered preaching, empowered sadhana, and that they can quickly come and we might have their company again. If you do that, I think it would be good for them and for us. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. That's why I take the dust of devotees like you. You're so kind. I might as well throw myself in as a small subclause. In, in America, and the Congress are always writing in things and slipping them in. If you could say a prayer that I might. Say something pleasing to my spiritual master and to you, Prabhus. I would very much appreciate it. Uh, so we get to hear the Hamsuguya prayers by Daksha. The Hamsuguya prayers are wonderful verses in the Vedic literature. And he took advantage of them, praying these wonderful prayers. It's interesting to note the Acharyas have explained he got the darshan of the Lord by hearing or, or chanting these prayers. We're almost at the end of the prayers. I don't know if Lord Vishnu is going to come down on Garuda and reveal himself to me or you. Maybe. Haven't seen him yet. But the potency is in the prayers. Attentive chanting and hearing of these prayers, meditating, trying to understand what they're saying. It's a good thing to do. Vishnath Chagavarti Thakur, he's given a little tiny synopsis. He says, verses 24 and 25, we're on 32 today. The Lord has all knowledge and the jivas have limited knowledge. This is what is being said in the prayers in those two verses. Verses 26 and 7, the Lord has both personal and impersonal forms realized according to one's preference. Verses 28 through 30, that although material forms are also the Lord, they do not arise from his swarup, these material forms. Everything is Krishna, but these do not arise from his swarup. Verse 31 and 32, today's verse, yesterday's verse, the statements of bhakti and jnana scriptures are not contradictory. Verse 33, Daksha asks for mercy. 34, real jnana does not claim there is no difference between the jiva and the Lord. Then he prays for his desire to be fulfilled. Unfortunately for Daksha, he did not pray for Bhakti. He got his desire fulfilled. He even saw the Lord to personally hear that it was to be fulfilled. His desire basically was for sex life. He wanted to 
enjoy the service of populating the universe. That's where his focus was. And the Lord blessed him with a wife who would be uh, on the same level and serve him accordingly. And he greatly populated the universe. But it stated he didn't get bhakti. It's kind of a shocker. You have to be careful what you ask for. It's stated because his desire <coughs> coincided with the Lord's desire, then the Lord happily fulfilled his desire. But the fulfillment of his desire, first one should say, why wasn't he desirous of bhakti, even when he saw the Lord? Dhruva Maharaj, he had so much material desire. When he saw the Lord, he realized, what an idiot I am. Why do I want material desires? I want your eternal service. Service of your servants. He got it. Why didn't Daksha? Because he had offended Lord Shiva. Vaishnava Parad. And because he didn't get bhakti. He wasn't desirous of it. It wasn't given to him. It set him up. Even though he was happy as a pig in mud. It set him up to offend Narada in the execution of the fulfillment of his desires. This is horrible. You can say so many good things about Daksha, but at least we can take note, we can take lesson. He can be our guru in an indirect fashion. Vaishnava Aparad, it's the worst thing you could do. The worst. Worse than even offending Krishna. So, these prayers are so wonderful. We should take shelter of them. Very philosophical. I didn't get to hear yesterday's class. Vishnath Chakvari Thakur says basically they're discussing the same things. That there's no contradiction between the path of Jnana and, and, and Bhakti. It's just a matter of perspective. So forgive me if there's a little inter oh, if there's a little overlapping. Uh, knowing that Jai Pataka Swami was leaving, I went to hear him speak. The Gora Kata was flowing like a river of nectar. And I'm glad I was able to go. But it brings us to today's verse where basically we have this argumentative, there's two parties, and eternally the argument goes on back and forth. Why is that? Well, first of all, let's go ahead and quote Bhagavad Gita, Me vidu surgana prabhavamna maharshaya ahamadir hi devanam maharshinam shasarvasha. Krishna says in the 10th chapter, second verse, neither the host of demigods no, the great sages know my origin or opulences, for in every respect, I am the source of the demigods and sages. So, Prabhupada used that example. How do you know who your father was? We don't know unless our mother tells us, because he's our origin. He's before us. We came from him. We don't know. So right off the get-go, how are you going to know who uh, Krishna He has to reveal himself in his multifarious, merciful ways. So that right there is, is part of the story. And then you have the bewilderment of the living entities. In the first canto, right in the very first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, Muyanti Yat Surya Tejovari Mirdam. By Krishna, by him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water. 319. Let's see if I'm lucky. Or how about this verse from Yamaraj? It was heard a while back where he said, uh, Real religious principles, famous verse, Dharman to Sakshat Bhagavad Pranitam. Real religious principles are enacted by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Although fully situated in the mode of goodness, even the great Rishis who occupy the topmost planets. We're talking Brahmaloka, Mahaloka, Tapaloka, Janaloka. 
Even they cannot ascertain the real religious principles, nor can the demigods or the leaders of Siddhaloka to say nothing of the Asuras, ordinary human beings, Vidyadharas and Charnas. Yamaraj had other verses stating the same thing. There are those who write scriptures like uh, Yagyavalki and Jaimini, but they're bewildered by the looser energy. And they cannot know the secret confidential religion of the 12 Mahajans. So it's not surprising that you miss the point. In fact, it's, a, it, it, it's just taken for granted. The conditioned soul is in ignorance. You're not going to understand Krishna unless you get his mercy, the mercy of the Vaishnavas. Now this is a very interesting verse because it's talking about the conflict the perpetual argument between the impersonalists and the personalists. Well, one might ask, well, what's wrong with that? I mean, you know, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, if he saw a uh, Mayavadi, it stated that sometimes his love for Krishna would impel him that he would cross the street, go out of his way just so that he could chastise the rascal. Sometimes even physically. You can't get away with that these days. It's called assault. Don't try it. But we're meant to know this philosophy so that we can defeat the impersonalists. It's expected as a disciple. I love it when Madhavananda Prabhu, he, he quotes his spiritual master when uh, Gorgo Maharaj said, don't claim to be my disciple when you speak if you can't quote Shastra. These books were given to us by Srila Prabhupada to learn so that we can share them, so that we can help the conditioned souls, so we can be delivered. Both are very important, saving oneself and saving as many as possible. It's the duty of a disciple to do that. But the reality of it is there's no contradiction between the two. It's just the misconception of unlearned. What did Madhvacharya say? Less intelligent non-devotees think that there's a contradiction between the two. In Srimad Bhagavatam, the Lord says, uh, let's see that, 120. This one I could probably get away chanting by memory. Vedanti tat tat vividas tat tam yaj gyanam aviyam brahmeti parmeti bhagavan iti shabdate. Learned devotees, scholars, transcendentalists, the tattva vidhas, they know the truth. What is the truth? That there's only one truth. The vastu, there's one substance. That substance is the supreme absolute truth, and it's a non-dual substance. And there's no difference in the non-dual substance, even though it's perceived differently by different people. Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan, it's all the same absolute truth. And Prabhupada in the purport is emphasizing whether you're an atheist saying there's no God, there's no God. Some people put their whole energy, their whole life in trying to convince others that you're, you're simply a fool, a manipulated puppet if you use the crutch of religion and the concept of God. There's just this world and what you make of it. We pity the fools, as Mr. T would say. I pity the fools. But not in an egotistical, egotistical way, not in an arrogant way. And that's something I'm going to touch on, try to swing in the back door at the end of the class. They want to defeat us. Why? Because they're proud. A Vaishnava may want to defeat somebody. Why? If he is a Vaishnava, an empowered Vaishnava, because he's humble. Because he cares about the person. Not because he thinks he's better than the other person. He's the most insignificant. We're fools. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu set the example. Before my spiritual master, I'm a fool. In Bhakti Lokya, did I get it right? Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he says, one who is humble 
doesn't consider him consider that he has the right to judge others. Whoa. How are you going to preach if you don't have some understanding where others are? The emphasis on this point is the humility of the devotee. Who am I to instruct you? That's not the vis business of a devotee. This may be a little difficult to grasp, but Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in describing Panchatattva, the five aspects of the absolute truth, he says the bhakta, Srivast Thakur, the pure bhakta, technically he's not guru. He's a bhakta. By his performance of devotional service, by his association, you get the mercy and you get the good fortune to come into the association of guru. Guru takes a very unwanted, thankless task. He considers it unwanted and thankless. And what is that task? Finding fault in the Vaishnavas. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, All Vaishnavas are my guru. I don't find fault with the Vaishnavas. How can I find fault with the Vaishnavas? It's a good question. How can we find fault? Only if guru tells you to find fault. And he does. He says, You become guru. Now, guru is not just a label, it's not a rubber stamp, it's not a position, it's not anything of this world. It's the empowerment of the acharya, the disciplic succession, and Krishna. If you have the empowerment of guru, you're guru whether anybody recognizes it or not, because you inspire others to surrender to Krishna. If you have accepted those blessings, that responsibility, then you take it as a service. Can I please help you? Can I show you the right way to surrender to Krishna? No, not like that. And the guru pulls one's ear. He chastises. A number of times with a number of devotees, Srila Prabhupada would say, so many people are recognizing and expressing their appreciation for all your services, and all I do is criticize you. He said, that's my duty. Srila Prabhupada's father, it's explained that he would correct his son and he would apologize, forgive me. It's my duty as your father to correct you. This is the mood of a humble Vaishnava and only a humble Vaishnava can be guru. Only a humble Vaishnava can understand the subject matter being described here. Lord Chaitanya, when he was preaching, he'd defeat everybody. When he was playing a scholar, he could put, put forward one tenet, one principle, nobody could defeat it. Then he would turn around and defeat that principle. And nobody could defeat that. And then he'd turn around and come from another angle and bring it back to the original point. Seen in a whole different light. Everyone loved being defeated by Lord Chaitanya. No one walked away going, God, no. Oh, Why? Because the love was the medium in which the correction took place. Srila Prabhupada, he could sit right there in front of you and call you, you're a rascal. You're a thief. Okay, a small thief. And he would kind of write it off. Well, I'm an old man. I can get away with that. It has nothing to do with age. It has everything to do with empowerment. One who's on the spiritual platform, which is what Krishna consciousness actually is, he has only love for everybody. There's no malice. There's no ego games that I'm going to defeat you. We have no business defeating people. Rupa Goswami challenged by the, uh, what was his name? The, uh, the, 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 the scholar. He said, give me, the, give me the piece of paper, I'll sign that. He didn't want to argue with the fool. The fool had no intention to submissively hear about bhakti. He wasn't going to waste his time. The disciple, it's another matter, defending the honor of one's spiritual master. That's not egotistical. That's selfless service, glorification of the spiritual master. 
So one who is on the spiritual platform, he doesn't have a problem with all these statements. That the Lord has no form. Of course he has no material form. Krishna and the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita. He says, uh, Sankhya Yoga Pritagbala Pavadanti Napanditaha Ekam Apyastita Samyag Ubiyor Vindate Palam. Only the ignorant speak of devotional service as being different from the analytical study of the material world Sankhya. Those who are actually learned say that he who applies himself well to one of these paths achieves the results of both. And Srila Prabhupada gives a brilliant example in the purport. He says, Sankhya, they're trying to analyze all these things. Now, there's different kinds of ganis. The modern-day gani, they're just the scientists. They deal simply with matter. They're, you know, smaller, 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 trying to see, smaller, smaller. They're just atheists. They don't have a clue. They're just animals. So for them, they're most unfortunate because they have misused intelligence. They are intelligent, but they're misusing it. So Srila Prabhupada, he wants to smash this so-called science. Our temple of Vedic planetarium is going to be a giant club that will help do this in the eyes of the innocent public. But he didn't want to, he wanted to take away the priesthood that the, the scientists have usurped from the Acharyas, from the Vaishnavas, who are representatives of the absolute truth. But in terms of the individuals, he simply wants to help them. He gave more instruction. Srila Prabhupada gave more instruction to Sarup, personal instruction to Srup Damodar Goswami than he gave to any other devotee. Wanting the science to be demolished. And what was the essence of the advice he gave Srup Damodar Maharaj? He said, become the friends of these scientists. When they know you like them, when they know you respect them, they will let their walls down and they will, they, there is the potential that they will lend an ear to what you have to say. And we saw it in his preaching. Many of them accepted consciousness. You can't find consciousness in, in the small, tiny box of science. If I can't see it, I can't believe it. <laughs> So Vaishnav cares, not to overlord and defeat, but to serve by helping. The jnanis of, uh, the, who follow jnana shastra of the Vedic culture, they're so much more fortunate because they're trying to find the origin of life, of this world. And Srila Prabhupada says it's like trying to find the root of the tree. The Vaishnavas know the root of the tree and they are engaged in watering the root. So one's trying to find the root, the other is directly watering the root. If you take it to its conclusion, you will find Vasudevam Sarvamiti Samahatma Sudurla. You'll find Krishna. Now you may find him in terms of the Brahman. That's the natural conclusion one comes to by the strength of his intelligence. Gyan is an ascending process. You're heavily relying, simply relying on your acumen, your intelligence, your austerities. And those are very, very limited in comparison with the absolute truth. You cannot see at hoaxaja. You cannot catch him in the palm of, you can't catch him period by your own material endeavors. He's a jita. Only by bhakti can you catch him. But if you're fortunate and somehow or other have some little tiny tinge of bhakti in your jnana, making it jnana yoga, then you can realize Brahman. See, I have form, I engage in activities. I'm limited. The source of everything cannot be limited. He cannot have form. It makes perfect sense. And it's a fact. 
A material form can't make life. Life comes from life. The principal teaching to the scientists. Of course, Brahman, Brahat means the Param Brahman. The Vaishnavs realize that. But if you want to worship Brahman, knock yourself out. It's described as an auspicious path. Now, yoga, trying to understand the super soul is more auspicious and surrendering to the lotus feet of Bhagavan Krishna, that's most auspicious, but at least you're in a transcendentalist if you are trying to live on the platform of Brahman. And let's get real here. We don't have, we have a lot in common with the impersonalists. Not the Mayavadis, but even with them, a little. But the Mayavadis are offensive. The Brahmavadis, that's a whole different matter. As soon as the four Kamaras in their gyan got the darshan of Narayan, smelled the flavor, the scent of the Tulsi leaves on the lotus feet of the Lord, they got it. They're the eternal servants of Krishna. That verse is there in the stream of the Bhagavatam. Atma Ramas Tamuniya Nigranta Api Ukrame Kurvanti Haitikim Bhaktim Itam Bhuta Gunohari. That those who are Atma Ramas, all kinds of Atma Ramas, who understand the self, realize the self, take pleasure in the self. Uh, they desire to render unalloyed devotional service to the Lord. Why? Because he possesses all transcendental qualities. He possesses a transcendental form and can therefore attract everyone, including the Brahmavadis, especially the Brahmavadis. What's, how's it start? Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma and Asociati Nakanshikati Sama Sarveshu Bhuta Ishu Mad Bhaktim Labhate Param On the spiritual platform, pure devotional service begins. Now we're in apprenticeship. And because we're in apprenticeship, because we may not be self-realized, we know we're not this carcass. We know the activities we engage in are not that important. Eating, sleeping, duties, responsibilities, da 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 Aside from service to Krishna, they have no value. Decoration of a dead body. Someone should turn that off. Uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Uh, the spiritual platform. It is where devotional service takes place. To render service to the Supreme Spirit, you have to be spiritually realized. Otherwise, he kindly presents himself in forms that we can touch, see, and practically serve. Like the deities, like the spiritual master, like the Vaishnavas, etc. This is the apprenticeship stage. But apprenticeship implies we're still influenced by the bodily concept of life. And that implies we have false ego. Which means I think you're, I'm better than you are. That's the nature of false ego. If I think I'm the body, I'm better than your body. And false ego, bodily consciousness, dictates that you are a taker and that you are selfish and an exploiter. And that even influences us here in... Uh, Vaidhi Bhakti. Prayena Payusa Sabha Kalavas Minyugajana Manda Sumanda Matiyo Manda Bhagya Yupadrutaha. This age is a really, really quarrelsome, argumentative, degraded age we find ourselves in. The nature of having taken birth in this age is that we're going to be quarrelsome. We're going to be lazy in spiritual life, misguided, unlucky, and always disturbed. 
and that you can see even influencing us in our devotional reciprocations with each other. Well, that Prabhu has a different understanding on a particular point of her philosophy. Can you imagine? He thinks women can initiate. What an idiot. And you focus on that which you don't agree with. This verse, the last two, this verse and yesterday's verse is emphasizing the unity in the diversity. Of course we have individuality. Of course people have different perspectives in spiritual life, Krishna consciousness. If both parties are wanting to serve and please Krishna, and that is their only motive, don't get involved. Don't get in between the two of them. Now, I'm not going to say, I'm in front of the deities, I can say no lie. Because I can make mistakes in my statements in front of the deity. Until you are a liberated soul and Krishna is dancing on your tongue, pulling your heartstrings, where you're the perfect transcendental medium for your spiritual master and the Lord, that's what conditions, as even aspiring devotees do, they commit mistakes. What do you expect? Our whole existence, our whole sojourn in this world has been one bad mistake, one bad choice after another. Now, somehow or other, we have the association of the Vaishnavas, the Vaishnavis. Now we're on the right track. Anyone on the right track in devotional service should be offered all respects, at least all respect. You may have some bodily, you know, whatever, way in which you reciprocate, etiquette is dictated, and one should follow, but the respect. On the spiritual platform, that comes naturally. On the intellectual platform of Krishna consciousness, you got to really scratch your head. Prabhupada would say, you have to have common sense. Common sense is not that common. Organization and intelligence, Srila Prabhupada said, would allow this movement, ISKCON, to be empowered to carry on the message for the next 10,000 years. That means spiritual intelligence. When you spiritually realize you don't get hung up on these things, the differences, the details, not in an egotistical way. You laugh at them. At Waitachari, was down in Shiva Kanchi. Vishnu Kanchi, he saw the Shaivites bumping heads with each other, going on perpetually arguing, Shiva's supreme. No, he's not. Vishnu's supreme. He just laughed. Go worship Harihara. Give up your argumentative mood. Surrender to your worshipful deity. Your worshipful deity, if he's a servant of Krishna, will bless you by your sincere attempts to worship the supreme even if you're misguided in your understanding of the Supreme. And that's the thing about Vaishnav reciprocation. Yeah, devotees make mistakes. Yeah, devotees have misconceptions. But our acharyas have showed us Krishna will rectify the mistake. He will rectify the shortcomings. Guaranteed. As long as the devotee sticks to the process of devotional service. And we want to help such devotees. We don't throw away devotees. We should not throw away devotees. Mentally, we write people off. You know, I don't like him. I don't agree with him. I don't like his style. I don't like his emphasis. Happens all the time. My friends with folded hands, I say, be careful. Very, very careful when dealing with Vaishnavas especially if you have managerial duties and services. Oh my God, is management, I speak from experience, perfect facility for offending Vaishnavs and all others. Perfect facility. Because you've got, you've got, you got the power. You think you have the right. No, manager means servant. Servant leader. Servant, servant, servant of these servants. That's an empowered manager. That's an empowered leader. 
And yeah, he may sit on the big seat and he may get all the, you know, respect and worship. Gurus should be worshiped as good as God. The disciples should do that. But I might as well throw in a little etiquette that disciples of second generation of, of, of Srila Prabhupada's disciples might consider. I have a friend who set such a wonderful example in this regard. God brothers and sisters of their Guru Maharaj are to be respected as much as their Guru. If you want to spend days worshiping your spiritual master, I will be right there helping you. You should be surrendered in the same mood with reciprocating with the God brothers and sisters of your Guru Maharaj. And those Guru Maharajas who are empowered, they are of that opinion and they say that to their disciples, but you can't force realization on anybody. Bhakti is a it, it's consciousness. And you have to want it. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says, I realize now that I'm wholly the principle of self consciousness, and I will no longer relate with the body and mind. I am not you. Your interests are not my interests. When the laws of nature act upon you, causing you to grow and flourish or to decay, decay and suffer has nothing to do with me. I'm consciousness, part and parcel of the supreme consciousness. My relationship is eternal service to the supreme and all of his servants. On that platform, there's only love. What to speak of respect, you genuinely care because you love Krishna. At least, okay, let's talk Brahman, where bhakti begins. At least, you see, everyone's the same as me. Everyone. The, the annoying mosquito and Brahma, they're all, both loved by Krishna equally. We got no special, no cause for thinking I'm better than anybody else. And anything that facilitates us thinking in that way, whether it's managerial service or it's being the husband of a, of a, of a Vaishnavi or it's, a, you know, whatever. Use any examples you want. If it facilitates your thinking, you're special and you have the right to lord it over somebody for your pleasure, your interest, you're in Maya Prabhu. And the Vaishnavas kindly will smash that if you place yourself at their feet. Vaishasika, one of my Siksha gurus, a dear friend, to say, I live to be corrected. One who has that humility, that desire, he's not finding faults and standing on the pulpit and pointing out the faults of devotees. He may take the service of guru and find faults of devotees, but he does it to help the devotees. Selfless. This is the mood of Krishna consciousness. And this is where everything becomes clear. The five blind men touching the elephant. You know, one touches the tail and thinks it's a rope. One touches the leg, thinks it's the trunk of a tree. One touches the uh, big trunk. Oh, it's like a big, heavy, uh, thick python. One touches the side and thinks, oh, no, it's like a big house, uh, a big rock, a hill. They're all right. In the absolute truth, it's one with variety. And Lord Chaitanya has expressed that in perfection. Atintya beta beta tattva. He brought the conclusion, the epitome of all four Sampradaya's perspective of the elephant of the absolute truth. And has given it to you and I through the disciplic succession. Unity in diversity. Diversity has to be there. Individuality has to be there. When misconceptions are there, it, 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 if it is your place, it is required of you to try and help and correct the devotee in the situation. If it's your place. If it's not, 
Tolerance is what you do. Prayer is what you engage in. You care and hope that the Prabhu or the situation is rectified. And Prabhupada more than once said, it will be rectified, but in Krishna's time, not yours. So these two verses are very, very nice. Gyan and Bhakti, they lead to the same thing. Those who engage according, yoga means bhakti. Prabhupada said it and he'll, he says it in many purports. I was speaking to a devotee and they said, I just read that in the third canto. Srila Prabhupada said, yoga means bhakti. If you're connecting with the supreme, that means bhakti. That's why Bhagavad Gita full of, you know, three karma yoga, jnana yoga, and bhakti yoga. And every page of Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita as is, it's bhakti yoga. There's no mistaking. Surrender to Krishna. And I wish I... I love this verse. This is my favorite, uh, you know, more so than Vedanti Tat Tat Vividas. What the Upanishads describe as the impersonal Brahman is but the effulgence of his body. And the Lord known as the super soul is but his localized plenary portion. Lord Chaitanya is the supreme personality of Godhead, Krishna himself. Full with six opulences, he is the absolute truth. And no other truth is greater than or equal to him. Third verse of the first chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita. In spiritual realization, it's easy to grasp. Once we become free of offenses in chanting and in serving, then that clarity will be given as a gift by our spiritual master in the names. The more of us that come to that realization, that platform, the more we'll be empowered to help each other. And I know that's what all of us really want. So that should be our business. Help each other. Impersonalism, it affects everyone and everything in this day and age. Namaste, Gauravani. Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pacharne, Nivashesha Sunyavadi Paschacha Disatarde. Even among us devotees in our reciprocations with others. Just two days ago I heard a God sister say, I'm surrounded by thousands of devotees and I still feel lonely. A Vaishnava's heart breaks when he hears that. Now, I'm an optimist. Every Vaishnav worth the title, worth the name, is an optimist. One of my Prabhus, I think it's okay to say, he said, wow, in Vrindavan, I've never seen the community come together to worship like we did at Fugor Purnima. We have a blessed community here. Let's not be satisfied with simply the externals. Go as deep as we can in developing relationship with each other. On the spiritual platform, it's not a problem. It's the natural state of being. But being aspiring devotees, we have to work at it and we have to practice it. And we should know it's the desire of our spiritual master. It's the desire of Srila Prabhupada that love and trust be the medium of exchange between each other. And it's not going to happen with everywhere, with everybody, but you can make it a reality in your life if you want the blessings to descend. If you show your effort trying to serve the Vaishnavas, and that means not the way you want, the way they need, the way they want. The person you're serving decides what is service, not you. That's a modified description of Prabhupada saying the spiritual master decides what is service, not the disciple. So I just pray for your blessings. I pray for you. Every day I pray for you, Prabhu, to Nishinga Day. At least it's a step in the right direction for this hard heart. So I need your help. We need each other. As Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada was instructed by his spiritual master, if you share Krishna consciousness in the English-speaking world, it'll be good for you and good for those who help you. 
Are there any questions or comments? Yes, my friend, Gora. Thank you very much. Really, you've gotten so many, you gave so much food to the cloud. some thoughts that you sparked in me about science Be since science Please. is pretty much equal to atheism today yes. and I remember reading <clears throat> back in the 70s how Srila Prabhupada when he was starting the Bhaktivedanta Institute he said it he said preaching to the scientists is our most important form of preaching because the scientists are in such an influential position in society, that if we can somehow or other get them to embrace Krishna consciousness on some level, that will affect millions of people. Um, and on that note, uh, I was thinking, I don't know if, the, if our Mayapur Institute offers such a course, or have, has offered, or VIHE has offered, but I was thinking that um, it would be really valuable for someone to develop a Science for Preachers course, just so that we could have at our fingertips, all the most important arguments in being able to defeat evolutionary theory and yeah. Big Bang, etc. Um, Bhakti, Bhakti Surat Damodar Maharaj was mentioning uh, to Srila Prabhupada that um, when he would organize these uh, Bhaktivedanta, Bhaktivedanta Institute symposiums where big, big yeah. scientists would be invited to come, he noticed there was a certain amount of tension among some of them in some of the discussions because they were not so theistic, but he said he noticed when it came to prasadam time, because Evil. prasadam was first class, all the scientists became very jolly and in a very good mood. And Prabhupada said, yes, they come for the tongue. <laughs> so we should never underestimate. And I was Evil. thinking, I was thinking this, this tied in with your point of how we should be dealing with people in a loving way. Because we're not Prabhupada and we can't clobber people over the head. But we can offer them, I'm not saying Prabhupada clobbered people over the head, but with scripture, <laughs> he was uh, yeah. unparalleled. And, um, and I saw a quote on the back of the Bhaktivedanta Institute bus, um, paraphrasing, it's um, Werner Heisenberg, he was saying, when one takes a drink from the glass of sciences, one becomes an atheist, but when one comes to the bottom of the glass, God is there. And he will? I just wanted to share those points. He took notes, that's called attentive listening, very nice example. By the way, can I mention one last example that I, want, I wanted to slip in class? A symptom whether or not you're present for your prabhus. When, they talk, when someone approaches you to talk to you, try and see whether or not you're averting your eyes, the walls going up, or if you're looking in the eye and being there present for the prabhu. Just a little hint. Yes, my friend. Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Uh, one little unknown factor about preaching to the scientists, uh, Prabhupada at one point said, uh, immediately disagree with everything they say. <laughs> <laughs> you just gladly shut them down. And if you do that, if you, if you notice, Prabhupada did that. He did that repeatedly with every scientist he talked to. The first thing he did, he shut them down and said, you're all wrong. No, this is the way. And so then you got the preaching attitude of actually doing it with love, and we can do it that way. Now, when you're preaching to Maya bodies, I've had experiences that it's, sometimes it's confusing because they believe in God. They believe in Krishna as, as something like God. But they, when it comes right down to it, you listen a little bit, then you find out what they're really about. They're God also. And so they want to take the attitude. Of, <laughs> so, I thought so. <laughs> Confirmed. You listen and you hear it. You know, then they, they get on this platform saying, okay, now I'm God. I kicked the ladder off. I don't need this anymore. So I'm on this high platform during the Brahma Jyoti. And so you got to listen. Then you, with love, you just smash them to pieces. You tear them apart. But it depends on the intensity of their belief and what they, mm. they think. Yeah. So it depends on how you approach them. And sometimes you got to be like a thunderbolt. And you have to. Prabhupada, of course, is you know, the master. But sometimes you have to do it. Uh, on the spiritual platform, Krishna dictates. When we don't get in the way, Krishna can work through us. And listening for an aspiring devotee is a big part of that. Try and understand what is the person, where is he coming from. And you might act accordingly. So I had the experience of preaching to the past president of India, Bhakti Yana Singh. You know that Sikh guy, what he had? Anyway, he was the past president of India, and I got in a debate with him. And I defeated him. 
And so he, I said, now you got to understand that once you're defeated, you become my disciple. And so he laughed and I thought it was really funny. You know, a little American talking to the president of India and defeating him and like, a, you know, you know, about this Mayavadi philosophy that he was, a, he was one of those guys. So Shiva Prabhupada has empowered all of us to, to do that, to, to really hit the nail on the head. When it comes to preaching Mayavadi, you, you're fully armed. No problem. Shiva Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Balakshmi. Can somebody help? Thank you. You mentioned. It's on. You mentioned about uh, when the disciple hears uh, a criticism related to one's spiritual master, mm. one uh, the disciple should uh, do something about it or something like that. Mm. So, what if uh, a disciple feels something is not so appropriate and tries to to say something to at least to purify one's own heart for having mm. heard that, mm. and then the spiritual master might not like that action of the disciple. So how should the disciple feel? Of course, uh, a disciple who is full of faults. Oh, how do we understand the, all this? Giriraj Swami said, before chastising someone, you should look at your own heart and see how much envy and pride is there. If you find envy and pride, you might be a little hesitant. Now, when trying to correct somebody because they committed an offense, etiquette is part of it. Each individual circumstance will be different. Do you have the car? Do you have the position? Are you equal or, or superior to them? If not, then it's not your place to do the correction. You should leave or you should, you should leave. If you stay and don't do anything, but etiquette does have its confines. You know, you might want to really be biting the tongue, but he's my senior. How can I? But, uh, you know, the spiritual master, sometimes, and this, unless you're on the spiritual platform, you won't understand this statement I'm about to make. Sometimes he will outwardly present one thing and inwardly be experiencing or thinking another. You can use that and, you know, go to Chaitanya Leela and see so many times the Lord appeared to be angry and chastised. But in early he was very pleased. The chastisement, if you get chastised by the spiritual master, it's not something to avoid. You don't want to mess up the displeasing, but if he's so kind that he will correct you through chastisement, you're most fortunate. One of my God brothers the other day said, every reciprocation I had with Srila Prabhupada was a chastisement. <laughs> And he's a blissful devotee, and I've had another God who said the same thing, but he didn't take the chastisements in the same way. And he's taking shelter of an imagined Srila Prabhupada, you know, the path of Ritvik. You know, Vastu means unchangeable. It's at, Prabhupada is who he is and who he was, and people can make him into, uh, what did you say, a fluffy teddy bear. That's not Srila Prabhupada. Loving soft but hard as a thunderbolt simultaneously, whatever it takes to help. So, you know, unless there's individual circumstances nailed down, it's very difficult to answer accordingly. The principle is just of Jiva Goswami taking the heavy chastisement as guru, but actually it was the proper thing to do. My guru is insulted, I'll defend his honor. Anybody else? Yes, my friend. Um, you were mentioning about managers and management. Yes. Um, I remember once uh, some of our devotee in Bombay, he was giving lecture, and during lecture he was mentioning during the reign of Ramachandraji, one normal man, ordinary man, he kicked out one dog. And 
dog approached Lord Ramchandra that what is my mistake? Why this person kicked me? And then Lord Ramchandra called this person and he told, he's a dog, that's why I, I kicked him. There's no mistake, but he's a, just his dog. And Lord Ramchandra asked, so what kind of punishment do you want me to give him? And this dog says, do you see that temple on the hill? Yes, make him president over there. This is, this is punishment or award? You don't know, it's going to be punishment because in a previous life I was a president of that temple and I offended so many people and I became a dog. So eventually he's going to turn out just like me. So that's true. When a managers, being a manager, it's wonderful, but he has to be careful. Yeah. Put a little positive slant to it so the managers don't think I'm anti-managerial. They take the headache on behalf of Srila Prabhupada. And that is so much appreciated by Srila Prabhupada. So much appreciated. I don't want to do it, but I offer my respects to all those who do. And the best, I do whatever I can to encourage or to inspire, and sometimes even say a little, if I have the relationship, a little like, you sure that's really what the you know what should be done but uh, yeah thank you I love that pastime it was a Brahmin who kicked the dog actually so yes my friend I went away but then uh, I was thinking about what you said about science and then it came to my mind because I studied uh, only two years at university and uh, I remember um, a phrase of La Laplace. He was a great, uh, uh, one of the first chemists, maybe he invented chemistry about 300 years ago. When he was asked about why you don't believe in God, he said, I don't need this explanation. I don't need the, to take into account him to uh, explain my experiments. Uh, this might have been uh, true 200 years ago when Newton, Laplace, was, uh, they were studying uh, simple uh, systems of nature. A system is something that a scientist, uh, as, as, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> a system is something that uh, an observer isolates from all reality, put a boundary around and studies. Because if you don't put a boundary around something, you cannot talk about it at all. Mm. Today, 300 years later, uh, science is uh, dealing with the science of complexity. So, scientists are trying to understand the real world and um, very, very complex systems with uh, a myriad of uh, interconnected things. So, uh, they have uh, started to understand the emergence, uh, meaning very, um, that the um, from the interactions of single parts, the complete whole will exhibit some uh, properties which are not found in the single bits. The problem with that is that even if you study this complex system, you still have to put a boundary around. Mm. Now, Krishna is a, you said, every, all the world is Krishna. He, even science today, understand that if you really want to describe something accurately, 100%, you would have to take into account the whole universe. But to do that, we know have computer power. Meaning, even if you, to describe any phenomenon that you observe, you should take into account the, everything exists, everything happens, which is impossible. I don't think now, but it will always be impossible. The only way to do that is to have a full view of the world, and that is Krishna. So, if you want to talk to scientists, eh, and not just uh, to receive the rubber stamps on your idea of God, because uh, I know many honest scientists, they are after truth. Mm, sure. But they, they cannot see the whole 
they study maybe a feather falling down. So, okay. They are conscious, they are aware that uh, to describe fully the motion of the feather walking down, uh, falling down, you'd have to take into account the whole universe, but you cannot do that. So I think uh, if you want to impress them, if you want to, um, uh, have, if you want to try to give them a glimpse of what Krishna is, you should talk about, uh, we should talk about uh, this, that um, the complexity of the whole universe, and also you should insist on consciousness, as you said before, because consciousness is the only grade of science. And um, until you really you explain consciousness, you'll never, um, you'll never be sure about uh, your explanation of, of things. Also, because consciousness probably is not the result only the brain, uh, is, the, is the result, at least materially, of the interactions of all matter that exist in the universe. Then, uh, uh, to understand Krishna you need bhakti, uh, to understand Krishna is a, a gift from God. But you can bring a scientist or somebody looking for the truth up to a certain point and uh, Krishna will do the rest. But I think uh, religious people shouldn't try to use uh, um, inaccurate language with scientists or trying to, um, to look for their approval. Um, it's not only, uh, yes. Only. Thank you for your advice. Anybody else? And of course, the people realize if you want to go, it's way, you certainly can go. Yes, my friend. Please. I don't know. They probably turned us off, but uh, if not, then you should have a microphone. Uh, the only comment myself, I, I always think often to just uh, pace myself in that regard, is I always think about Krishna is the ultimate compassion person. He will judge every living being in his last breath. So what to expect we us to judge anyone around? So when I think sometimes that way, I just stop and correct myself and thinking that way, you know. I, I, you know, so. Nice point. Just, <laughs> Everybody get it? Thank you very much. I have a small question. All right. Somebody have legs to help you. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your best. Yeah, it's true. Oh, what's the second line? Surrender devotees, what? Yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. Do you have a relationship with anybody that you've surrendered to? Do you have a relationship or that you with anybody that you surrendered to? No. No, surrender doesn't mean sometimes. Surrender means I know this person can help me and has only my best interests at heart. You don't have that relationship yet, do you? Stay open-minded. More people, meaning Vaishnavs and Vaishnavis, are going to be less advanced than more advanced. You respect them nonetheless, and Krishna, for within the heart, your heart, will lead you to one who can give you shelter and one who can give you guidance. There's always guru in the world, just like there's always sun. As long as the world exists, there will be a sun. Krishna always has his representatives here to help those who are finished with 
competing with him and who want to learn how to surrender to him and please him. Stay open to that by being respectful. Yeah, a lot of devotees, they have trouble, they have difficulties. If they're devotees, not cheating hypocrites, but if they're devotees, there's two different, there's a difference. Hypocrites and cheaters, one hand, and, and, and devotees that sin or have difficulty on the other. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said it's better to be in a lower species than it is to be a hypocritical cheater. One who has difficulties if he's repentant and, and abhors himself for his weakness and he wants to become better, that devotee should be given respect, maybe from a distance, so that his shortcomings don't hurt your weak devotional service. But still, respect should be offered and help should be offered if, if you have the ability. If not, at least pray for them. But always stay open. There is a devotee waiting for you to come to the point of your desire being strong enough that Krishna will let you have his, his shelter. That's a fact. Panchatattva Prabhu. Can you give him the microphone? He might get to work. You have to be very sincere to achieve the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. So there's also, the onus is also on the, 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 the potential disciple. Big and time. he recommended going before the deity and praying in all earnestness and humility for the shelter of the spiritual master. Yasya and that, yeah. there, it goes right along with Yasya Prasada, Bhagavad Prasada, Yasya Prasada, Nagati Putopi. You have to beg for the mercy of the shelter of a spiritual master. And Krishna, he is the friend of every living entity. He will, he will send you that personality, but you have to be sincere. And we can make the mistake of saying, oh, this one and that one, and, and then accepting that everything is counterfeit. There is no pure mm -hmm. devotee. Prophet said there are always pure devotees present in this world. Hare Krishna. Thank you. I think that's a wonderful to note note to end on. Thank you for your company, for your tolerance, for your attention, for all the good qualities you share with me. Srila Prabhupada Ki, Samaveda Gaurabhakta Vrindaki, Gaur Premanandi.